things to say about hacks, people have never fucking used it. What about <clears throat> one of the articles? Another thing I wanted to ask you about, and one of the other articles that I was reading, uh, <clears throat> and it cited uh, a hex developer that actually left the project, citing suspicious reasons. And this guy <laughs> had said, you know, the, the most interesting technical <laughs> aspects of the projects were they were left off, removed, and instead you guys decided to focus on marketing jargon and empty promises. Yeah, so, purely retarded. Obviously not true. The number of features that Hex has is fucking crazy. Like it's, Hex has a referral program. Amazon has a referral program. Tesla has a referral program. Does Bitcoin have a referral program? Does Ethereum have a referral program? No. Okay, well that's innovation, right? Uh, Hex has three audits. Does Bitcoin have any audits? Nope. Does Ethereum actually have any audits? Nope. Hex does. Okay, well tell me where the fucking scam is here. Tell me we're paying thousands and thousands of dollars to professionals to fucking secure it and make sure the software has no bugs. Tell me, show me the scam, right? Like, it's just insane. Like, it's, it's the stupidest shit I've ever heard of. Uh, it, show me the scam. Show it to me. What, uh, what do you say? <clears throat> uh, one thing that I've definitely heard people say in terms of the way that this has been marketed <clears throat> and the, the way that you've set things up uh, is that it, they've said that the way you set up the uh, claim the free Bitcoin was really mm -hmm. kind of a bait and switch. Like it was really so people would come in, claim the Bitcoin, even though the amount of hex you get per Bitcoin is super, super low compared <laughs> to the amount of ETH that you or the amount of X uh -huh. you get if you actually put in ETH. So some people have said that that's like kind of a bait and switch that you're kind of like just putting it out there so people know what it is only so that people, uh, you know, you can collect hex. I They're mean, all assholes. Yes, all those people are assholes. So when I got my Bitcoin, I got it for fucking free. Was that a bait and switch? I double clicked a program and boom, Bitcoin appeared in my computer. Was that a bait and switch? Because then I bought some. I bought a lot, actually. Did I get bait and switched? Because when I mined full blocks in Bitcoin with no fucking pull, 50 BTC block rewards, that shit was only worth $25 a fucking block because Bitcoin cost 50 cents back then. Did I get fucking bait and switched? Did I get scammed, bro? Did I get scammed out of my electricity? Because I took that 50 cent fucking Bitcoin? No, I got freemium onboarded, just like the fucking coupons that you read in the fucking newspaper every day. They give you free shit if you do something they want you to do. Same fucking thing, just like Clash of Clans, a video game. Makes billions of dollars every fucking year. Free game, but somehow they make billions of dollars. Wow, how do they do that? Good marketing is how they fucking do it. Now, if you don't think that Hex is worth your time to claim, well, maybe I would have thought Bitcoin wasn't worth my time to mine back when it was 50 fucking cents. But that's not very smart, is it? Because this is the highest appreciating asset class in the history of mankind. And what is worth little becomes worth a lot one day. XLM was nowhere and given out for free. And then it became a top 10 crypto. I think it's maybe 13 now. I'm not sure. Maybe it's, you know, 12. Uh... Bitcoin was given out for free. BCH was given out for free. BSV was given out for free. XRP was given out for free. XLM was given out for free. Ev fucking all these coins are top 10 coins all given out for free. Do I hear fucking people yelling scam about that shit? Scam? No. If you don't like the free stuff, fuck off. Don't claim it. But $1.4 billion of Bitcoin already claimed their fucking hex. And I'm going to take those guys that have $1.4 billion in net worth over all the naysaying broke little shitheads out there. <clears throat> I, I do understand that. There's a bunch of so, nerds out there. Now, if, there if you don't like the value of Hex to free claim it, then help get the value up. If more people free claim their Hex, less of it goes to the adoption amplifier. The adoption amplifier just gets a copy of the unclaimed coins. If you guys would claim the coins... They wouldn't go to the goddamn adoption amplifier anymore because they'd be fucking claimed. But people are too stupid to read the documents. So look, I don't know who out there is trying harder to get less coins available to the adoption amplifier uh, than people that are promoting hex. Because the more people that claim their coins, the less they don't, they're not given to the adoption amplifier anymore. It's, it's that simple. They just get a copy of unclaimed coins. The math that judges how much hex is minted through the adoption amplifier, which is where you transform ETH into hex, it's literally 1 350th of the unclaimed coins. So if you claim coins, it reduces that number. It reduces the number that goes into the adoption amplifier every day. And there's not, there's only, we're already 50 days in, there's only 350 days. So if you haven't claimed your coins yet, you're missing almost 20% of your stack. It's that simple. <clears throat> 
So one thing I want to talk about is uh, regarding, so you've designed this, you know, in your opinion to be uh, better than Bitcoin. And yep. I, I, think you, I think you would say that's not your opinion, but you know, th that's the way that this was designed to be better. Sure, than I, I designed it to be better than any other cryptocurrency that's ever existed, right. truthfully. And I'm so, happy to so, defend all the features that it has. <clears throat> so all that being said, it's in everybody's best stake or uh, best uh, interest, not stake, best interest, <laughs> uh, no pun intended, uh, to stake the coins, right? To stake hex. So if everybody is staking uh, and they're all depends. frozen up, then then how how what is the actual use case of the coin other than I guess what people have called pumpamentals? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is people that don't know anything about speculating have this fantasy that valuations in cryptocurrency are tied to utility. It's not. It's not. Well, look, I, well, look I, at I, look at Cardano. Cardano has no product. Yeah. Dogecoin is worth a quarter billion dollars. Bitcoin has less on-chain transaction volume, less retailers, less ATMs, more AML KYC, uh, is three times lower than all-time highs, but people find utility there. There's utility there, right? Yeah. So like, no it, I, I don't... There is meme coin. Well, there is actually. There, there is. Entertain, so, entertainment value. You can send... Well, no. Like... People's standards are fucked up. So what, you have to get to the core of why we're in crypto. Are you in crypto because you want to uh, make people in the third world rich? Okay, you're stupid. It doesn't work. They don't have money to buy in. All the coins, 1% of the coins in the Plus Token Ponzi, 1% of the coin Tim Draper's got, 1% of the coin the Winklevi has got, 6% uh, on centralized exchanges, three quarter of a percent is in Mt. Gox, I could go down this list. It's a long list. Okay, now when do we get down to Africa? 42% of coins are in 2,000 addresses. Now, how many of those are African people? Get the fuck out of here. You're not saving anyone in the third world with, with crypto, okay? I'm, I'm in it for the tech and the babes. I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> I'm in it for the gains. And it's the world's fucking highest appreciating asset class that's ever existed. And so it's a perfect reason to be in it. Now, eventually, once everyone has a wallet, then we take over the world because then we get true efficiency as long as if we you need circular frictionless uh cycling of money and velocity in the ecosystem to get efficiency if you don't have those circular economies in the bitcoin economy you have inefficiency so if you have to go through a centralized exchange to get into another currency for anonymity like if you need to get out of your bitcoin into monero for anonymity you're going to get your ass beat paying the bid ass spread and the fees. And you have to do it twice. You're going to get into the thing that you want, and then you're going to get into the thing that you really want. So let's say you want to buy a house. Okay, well, you got to get out of Bitcoin into USD, and then you got to out of USD into the house. Fees, fees. Two sets of fees. Sucks. So all crypto will forever be inefficient and unadopted. And the reason people stop accepting it is because it, you lose money accepting it. It confuses your customers. It reduces your closing ratio in the shopping cart. Uh, and then to train your staff to actually utilize it, your customer support. Oh, I need to send a refund. I can't refund him to the address that send it. He might not have the keys anymore. Oh shit. Well, I've got to have this extra thing to handle refunds alone on its own. People that have never been in business don't understand how hard it actually is to handle payments and customer service. And you know, oh, you want to, you want to run like a freemium offer where you get people on a rebuild campaign. You want to have like a newsletter or something? Oh, you can't rebuild in crypto because it's push only. You can't pull. Oh, well, I guess we can't do that business. There's all these things that suck about crypto that cannot be fixed until everyone has a wallet. And I don't care what crypto you use. Once everyone has a wallet, it's insanely, insanely efficient. No more middlemen, no more fees, no more crap. But someone has to have the marketing budget to advertise into the real world, to onboard everybody, to get them a wallet to get those efficiencies. I mean, look, WeChat is so efficient because it's purely digital. PayPal is so efficient because it's purely digital. For crypto to be truly efficient, we need everybody to have a wallet. And until everyone has a wallet, there won't actually be any utility. You'll have darknet utility, which is maybe 2% of the market cap. You'll have maybe hiding some offshore funds. But as long as it's got to come back out into real money anyway, they're going to tax your ass when it comes out to real money. So it's... This, this concept that you need something beyond just going up in price for crypto to have value is, is hilarious to me because nothing in crypto has that. 
and it never has. Well, <clears throat> one of the things that you said when you spoke about wallets and, and you know, everybody needs to have an address and, and a wallet. You know, one of the things we, we were talking about last week, Ben and I, were uh, the number of Bitcoin addresses with uh, with one or more Bitcoin <clears throat> in it at this particular moment is like it's like 750,000, something like that. It's risen 11% in the last 12 months. So we're starting to see this. We're starting to see more and more people with wallets, actual Bitcoin in it, not just your airdroppers and, you know, those people. We're, we're, we're not there yet, but we're moving in the right direction, in my opinion. Well, I mean, I'll give you the exact I'll give you the exact numbers right now. So right now, the number of addresses that have one Bitcoin in them are two million. Nope, I'm pretty far from the screen here. Uh, yeah, two million. So there's two million addresses that have uh, from point one to one Bitcoin, and actually, that's ten percent of all Bitcoin. That have either a tenth or one Bitcoin in it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, and it's the, it's and, and it's ten like percent of all Bitcoin has that or under. So if you if you can look this stuff up, you just Google Bitcoin Rich List. It's going to take you to a website called BitInfoCharts.com, and it has a really great uh, breakdown. So, for instance, when I say forty-two percent of coins is held in under two thousand addresses, right now it's forty-two point oh one percent. If you look at the column all the way on the right, 62% is held in addresses that hold over 100. Wow. So, the the number of addresses, the number of addresses that hold up to one Bitcoin is four is 3.6%. So those people that you're talking about, all of the people, all of the coins that exist from zero to one at the max, is 3.61% of the total supply. So it sounded good when you quoted it, like, oh, there's 2 million wallets. But it sounds a lot less good when you go, like, oh, they actually don't own shit. 